a lot of changes since last time. The canopy is on. Ah! The engine is on. Ah! It's amazing. Can you do ah like, one more time? Because I couldn't. Yeah, what? Can you do ah one more time? Because I didn't film it when ah! you did with the engine. Yeah. Okay, Yost, thanks to Yost. Say hi, Yost, to our viewers. Too bad Claude's not here because he's the other one who deserves a special thank you because his crane played a very important part in the uh, crane the is whole that crane. Also gave us many words of wisdom, which we will cover in a sec. First, let's talk about the canopy and all the struggles. Uh, first things first, there's like a strip on the inside of this canopy. I don't know if you can, you can see, see it. On it's the this other like side. greenish thing. Between there and there. And that strip, Evan in his videos tells you to super glue. It doesn't work. Super gluing it doesn't work. Don't do it, viewers. We spent like half an hour trying to super glue it. Instead, our friends Chad and Yule had a much better tip, which is you cleco it on the inside, and then when you mount it, you transfer the clecos from the inside to the outside. Frankly, there's quite a bit of a gap there, so it's not that bad to act to just put it afterwards. Yeah, like we that's what we ended up doing because we didn't talk to Chad and Yule until after we finished this whole canopy thing, obviously. Uh, the other tip, like I masked off both sides when we put the canopy on, but you have to take the masking off of this side when you put these rivets and clecos in, so it's like... So that the masking tape doesn't end up underneath the rivets? Yeah, so it doesn't end up underneath the rivets, so it doesn't matter that much. And then on this side, you have to be careful where you add the masking tape, because if you add it too close to the edge, depending on how you mount the canopy, it can end up like getting under the skin, which is bad because then you have, you know, tape there instead of like your canopy or this, so that's no bueno. Um, the other thing is like we spent a little bit of time trying to just like mount this in the correct place We didn't trim the canopy at all because we didn't we didn't think we could do it any better than half did to be honest And so we like you know used four giant clamps basically to like position it roughly where we want so that the gap between the skin and the canopy was like less than an eighth of an inch all around that's sort of what we were prioritizing but other than that, it's like pretty smooth. Yeah, it's like the Seiko was fine. Like everything was fine. We ran out of time, but other than that, it was fine, right, Yos? Yes. Yeah. Yost was there to help. Yos was there to help, and thanks to Morgan, who was also there to help. Uh, Morgan was scared and probably won't be coming back, but that's okay. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, yeah. Other things. So once we finish now, Morgan for certainly is not coming back. You called him out like that. Back, Morgan, if you're watching. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So other things. Um, the next thing we did was the seat belts. So we mounted the seat belts up here, and uh, the, the instructions are kind of like sparse as to what to do here. Evan pointed out a good thing, which is that there's a bushing that goes on the inside, basically, to like help support this this nut. Don't forget the bushing. We also added like a washer on top of the bushing. Um, two and washers. Two Actually, washers. Actually, I think one washer in that side, one two washer, washers on this side. Yeah, it can vary depending on like the spacing of your canopy. And then the other important thing is like the first time we mounted these seat belts, we used the short bolts that came with the seat belts. Okay, right. Hold on, don't, don't, don't. Short bolts. So, so that bolt does, does not, short. it doesn't have a shank. The other yeah. bolt has like a shank on which the actual uh, seat belt swivels. Yeah, you can see. I don't know how well you can see the shank here, but yeah, the shank is important. Okay, you should we'll have the shank because without the shank, your seat belt doesn't swivel. And so when you like pull it forward, you see this is angled, and when you let it go, it comes back to its natural resting position. So it doesn't do that if you use the one without the shank because it's pressed super tight here, so it's just like fixed into one position. So not great. Um, then Yost heroically tightened these bolts underneath here. Again, so the whole parachute cables. Yeah, the, the instructions were pretty sparse. We ended up having to file up here so that we could have enough um, length of this cable to get all the way down to the bottom. And then we ended up using AN5-15 bolts with two washers on this side and one washer on that side and a lock nut. And that was just about the right length. You might add like another washer here if you're feeling like super generous. And then here we like basically torque this bolt with uh, an extension like guy and the torque wrench. So that's the canopy and parachute struggles. Am I missing anything, Peter? No, oh, um, so uh, according to Evan's advice and just general wisdom, we painted the canopy 
first from the inside. So when, then when you install the canopy, chances are you'll get some of the Cicaflex onto the, your beautiful painted yes, inner side. that's a good so, point. So to clean it off, you use mineral spirits. Well, no, so you oh, can't okay. use mineral spirits. But mineral spirits take a long time. Yeah, so they don't, it doesn't come off very well, actually. Yeah, even so when it's fresh and like just one day cured. Yeah, so mineral spirits didn't work super well. What worked much better were these RPM poly wipes. You can get them on Aircraft Spruce. They're like ungodly expensive. I swear, Aircraft Spruce did not sponsor. This is not a promotional <laughs> not video. A promotion. They're not paying us. But this, this works really well. The problem is that these are a bit aggressive, so don't like scrub super yeah, hard. Yeah, for instance, somewhere here, we ended up rubbing the paint. A little bit off. There was a that spot was somewhere bad. where we actually rubbed the, the, yeah, the in paint off. Yeah, I don't know you can see it you can always touch it up yeah, later. Here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like this spot. Yeah, yeah, but you can touch it up later. And what's really matters is that you don't have to you, you don't get any seek on the ceiling. Yeah. Right. So yeah. That's what would be hard. That's right the right. hard part to touch up, and that's the part you don't have to because you probably won't get Sika on it. But yeah. It is a bit of a messy process, so just forgive yourself if you end up getting Sika on the inside. It's okay. Okay, let's pause and then we can talk about the end. Yeah. Alright. And here's Peter to talk about the engine and how to mount it. Right, yeah, so we mounted the engine today, so it's all like really fresh. And Woo! It's yeah. A tiny bit traumatic, but uh, <laughs> mostly fresh. So step number one is, you know, getting your engine to, to the hangar. In our case, we rented a tour truck and uh, carried it over. And um, with three people, it's not that bad to get it into the bed and then get it out of the bed. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a lift, but uh, it's doable. So then when you get it off, you need to sort of crane it to put it here. And so we use Claude's crane. Um, the trick is you, the engine is bolted to the pallet, and so you can't, and the pallet is too big for a crane to sort of get underneath. So we end up uh, basically getting it close, uh, unbolting the engine mounts. Here are actually the, the mounts that the engine comes with. So this part is from the front and then this part is in the back, so it sits like that. So we unbolted these, moved crane with, uh, moved the engine with two people to the floor, and then attached the, uh, the engine. So the other thing is that when you're craning the engine, the people make it sound like it's super simple, it's like not. So you crane by these points, this one and this one, and there are these the, the coil bolts, so these are ignition coils, I think. No, like, maybe they're not. Uh, not entirely sure, but I think they are. And these bolts interfere with the clamps that you would use to, uh, to crane here. Uh, finally, Claude has had his like ground clamps. Let me actually um, show them. Um, so he has this uh, set of chains, and these bolts, as you can see, they're not just evenly round, they're ground down. And that's because if they're not, they would be interfering with the top of the air intake. So if you're, you know, sort of bought them fresh and figuring out why they don't fit, they don't fit. Like you may need to grind them down. Don't grind them too much, otherwise, you know, may fall down. Okay, so after that, so you crane it up, put it into the engine, and go, oh, ideally, before you do that, so while some of the prep work that we did, was to squeeze these bushings in. Yeah, thanks to First Rivet, who yes. had that tip. Uh, First Rivet um, builder suggested to sort of squeeze the bushings in without the engine, just use uh, the bolts and washers and uh, make sure that the, that the bushings are installed. Remember that the order here is a bit weird, so it's like hard, hard, soft, hard on, uh, on the top towards the airplane, soft towards the engine, and on the bottom the other way around. So hard towards the engine, soft. Uh, towards the airplane with the understanding that basically whatever things the engine is pushing on should be hard and whatever the one it's pulling on should be soft. Uh, so then you crane the engine up and you bring it here. The other piece of prep work is that we shortened a bolt on that side because the Facebook people said that it would interfere with the turbo otherwise. Yeah, next to the turbo. And it was a good call. Yeah. It would interfere with the turbo. You, we had a little this problems bolt. getting it to catch, but we yeah. It was still like, yeah. otherwise it would, it would interfere. So we ground right. it down by three threads. So anyway. imagine, so now you crane the engine up, you have the engine mount to the front and to the back. You're trying to unscrew the engine mounts and you discover a really nasty piece, piece of sort of uh, incidence. That there <laughs> is, um, like you can take uh, three bolts out of the four off, but the four one, you can take the bolt out, but then there is this nothing behind. 
that would sort of prevent you from installing this. And that's nothing, so from behind it looked like that once we removed it. It sits right here, like right about this spot. And you can also even see like there is a little hole there. That hole had a rivet. So that nut plate was sitting, or like plate with a nut, it's not really a nut plate. Uh, it was sitting behind like that. And that's how the, the bolts were, like basically that's how the engine, uh, the, this transportation mount was attached. So you're supposed to drill out this rivet, the rivet that was sitting in here. And it's a stainless steel And one. it's a stainless steel rivet, so it takes a little while to drill it off. I mean, like, once you know what to do, it's not that hard, and it's fine to drill it at an angle. But, uh, you know, we wouldn't have figured it out without Claude. So, like, Claude's just like, uh, Claude said, you know, there's a rivet, so remove it. So, you remove, uh, drill out the rivet, then uh, put the bolts in. Uh, it may require sort of, like, when we were craning the engine up, it wasn't because the chains were a little bit twisted, it wasn't perfectly horizontal. So we had to like lift one side, get the bolts, uh, get the bolts to align, require some finagling. Manual also specifies that the bolts on the top go, uh, the heads of the bolts face the engine, and then so they go this way, whereas the bolts on the bottom go that way. Right, so the, the bolts on the bottom heads are here. Mm -hmm. So uh, the only one that was really tricky here, I think was that bolt, so. Tricky bolt. to get it on, to be clear. Yeah, tr tricky to, to put through. Uh, and like the, the, I think the trick there was really to move this, uh, whatever it is, uh, I don't actually know, the coolant pipe. Like this coolant pipe is, is loose or you can, you can move it around, just sort of move it a little bit out of the way. Make sure none of the uh, wires underneath here is jammed behind the bolt because if that they are, be it would be impossible for you to put the bolt in and you probably will break the wires. So once the wires are in, you torque them. Um, you can see here there's a bunch of threads sticking out and we don't like it. However, um, it, the, the, what happens when you tighten this bolt is these bushings compress. So chances are if the bolt was actually shorter, you wouldn't be able to put the nut on because the bushings aren't compressed enough. So uh, we don't like it. I think it's unavoidable. The other thing that I don't really like about the setup, but uh, I don't think it's easy to avoid, is the fact that these are nylocks. So these are nylocks in the engine compartment, not good. Specifically, that bolt is a nylock in the engine compartment right above the muffler. It's not touching here, so there's no thermal contact, but still, it's nylock, you know, like less than a centimeter away from a muffler that's going to be really hot. Yeah, the A&P guidebook is yes, very this clear is, this is that this is not kosher for A&Ps, yeah. which so, is also why we replace the parachute tanks here with castle nuts. Yep. So that way, if we ever are in a situation where we pull the parachute, the nylock hasn't vibrated off and the parachute like yeah. does it's, not save us. It's possible us. that our engine will fall off in that situation, but at <laughs> least our parachute cables will not. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's most of it, I think. Uh, yeah, the only other thing is like to actually torque these bolts. Um, yeah, yeah, we but... needed like like a special ground down wrench that, that Claude had. So it's a 17 millimeter wrench, ground down. Uh, so it's about like, I don't know. Yeah, it's just ground down so that it fits inside. Yeah. Specifically, this one is the tightest one. Like here, to get the crescent wrench into here, there is not really enough space for a standard wrench. Five eighths of an inch or 17 millimeters work here. But the point is it has to be ground down. Bo yeah. Bolt, you need a bolt on this side and on this side. Uh, and actually, from on this side, you're tightening it from sort of the wrench comes from from the other side at an angle, and then you hold it there. Well, one person holds it, and the other person, you know, torques uh, this bolt. Yep. But other than that, guys, yep. cake, and we are very excited to have the engine mounted and to uh, yeah move on to the next phase of the build. Claude has spent about a year on this phase of the build. We're really hoping ours goes faster, but we will see. So yeah, thanks for watching viewers. Uh, hopefully we've answered all of your engine questions. Leave us a comment if you have questions on the process. And yeah, thank you for we'll watching. Try we'll try to answer. We probably don't necessarily know the Or we will yet. tag someone else who yeah. may answer, but yeah. All right, thanks guys. Have a good night. Have a great uh, President's Day weekend. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. Cheers. Bye.